We realize that high school, college, even a first job can seem scary. That's why we created Educacion.ph to equip them with tools, connect them to schools, find scholarships, learn online, match their skills to courses and jobs out there. So their future wouldn't be as scary. Educacion.ph You've earned an AWS certification. Congratulations. Now what? Show your employer, colleagues, and your customers that you've met the bar set by AWS experts. Add your digital badge to your professional profiles and email signature to highlight your skills. Share it on your social feeds to celebrate with your network and offer verification via email or on your resume. Cloud skills are in demand and you have them. Share your AWS certified achievement today. Hello, hello everyone and good evening. Kumusta naman kayo? Welcome to another episode of our Community Ignite series. So everyone, please meet the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Professional, Paul Sears. And today is really um, what I call operational observ observability or using the power of chaos. And uh, chaos engineering wants to see how production behaves and how it can handle unexpected conditions. So AWS is also looking into a service that we've announced. It's not available yet, um, but it's called Amazon Fault Injector. So make sure you know you go online, go to our portal. We have a we have a whole site here. You can download the white papers on this, understand the five pillars, and you can get you can get exam you can actually see all the principles uh, that we talk about of of those five pillars. In AWS, if you have your stacks built automatically, like with, with CloudFormation, you can deploy your stack in a different region and do a live test in a different region without disrupting your production. Again, our Community Ignite series is co-presented by Amazon Web Services and AWS Club Filipinas. Hi, I'm Mike Coleman, and I'm a developer advocate at Amazon Web Services. Today, I'm going to introduce you to the easiest way to launch and manage your project with AWS. Amazon LightSail. For more than a decade, AWS has been one of the world's most reliable and innovative cloud service providers. But maybe you're brand new to AWS and you find yourself intimidated by the wide variety of features and pricing models. You're not alone. Getting started with any new technology can be daunting. But even if you are familiar with AWS already, you may be looking for a way to reduce costs and simplify deployment of existing AWS workloads. Either way, you're in luck. LightSail reduces the learning curve of AWS's advanced features and pricing models, and it all starts at a low, predictable price. With LightSail, you get lots of helpful features, including one-click operating system and application stacks like WordPress, LAMP, Windows, or Linux, which you can run instantly, as I'll show you here. All you have to do to get started is launch the LightSail homepage, click Create Instance on the console, pick a location, select an application, give your instance a name, and click Create. In a few short clicks, LightSail is off and running deploying your instance. Another helpful feature is the ability to manage access to your website or web app. You can add load balancers as well as configuring your firewall and domain name settings to ensure secure access. And when your ideas grow and you decide to expand your business, LightSail makes the transition safe and effortless. Whether you want the ability to move your workloads directly to EC2 or connect to other advanced AWS services. Best of all, LightSail uses the same reliable and secure AWS cloud infrastructure trusted by over 1 million customers worldwide. And it doesn't stop there. LightSail is always innovating and offering new features to make your cloud experience as intuitive as possible. So as you can see, LightSail is an easy to use one-stop shop where you can deploy your application in minutes, host a website, or run your business software securely and cost-effectively. You can learn more about LightSail and find more videos like this at aws.amazon.com slash LightSail slash resources. In choosing a school, a course, or a career path, there is so much to explore. But that's why we're here. Don't know where to start? 
Mag-browse ka muna sa blog namin. Baka ma-inspire ka sa mga student advice, study hacks, and adulting guides. Meron kami niyan dito. Or learn about career paths that match your skills and interests. Or chat with us. Tanong mo lang, we'll point you in the right direction. Oh, let's say may dream school ka na. You can search for it and learn more about their programs and scholarships. At kung di ka pa decided, don't worry. Search and compare different schools to fit your needs. Pag ready ka na, submit an application. Easy. Maybe you're looking for a new hobby, certification, or degree? We've got online courses for that, and the learning doesn't stop there. Join a quest and pick something up with each visit through articles or videos. And the best part, you get to earn coins and redeem real rewards. Kaya sali na! With the right tools and information, we can find the best opportunities for you. Because the future can be scary. Pero tiwala lang. Keep exploring, keep learning with edukasyon.ph Hi, I'm here to talk about hosting your next website with AWS Amplify. AWS Amplify is a set of tools and services that enables front-end web and mobile developers to build secure, scalable, full-stack applications powered by AWS. Let's get started. In the AWS Management Console, search for AWS Amplify. Next, click Get Started under Deliver. Here, choose Deploy Without Git Provider and then click Continue. Next, give your app a name, your environment a name, and drag your app code directly into the console. To deploy, click Save and Deploy. When the deployment is complete, click on your domain to see it live on AWS. Hello and welcome to the 18th episode of the Community Ignite series. Build and operate containers, containers apps with AWS Copilot. My name is Tony Prakosu. Uh, you can call me Tony. I'm an AWS Senior Developer Advocate for us. And when we build application, there are a couple of parts that we need to integrate in order to have our apps run properly. So your application will be packaged along with dependencies, uh, runtime engine, and the configuration. And Docker as a container platform acts as an intermediary between your containers and the operating system. So build will build a container image, but this is going to reside in our development environment, which is on our local. Now, the next thing that we need to do is to push the image into a centralized repository. If you're running containers, you can use Amazon ECS and it's a really great option for you as ECS is used extensively within Amazon to power services. So thank you so much again to Amazon Web Services and AWS Ciclab Filipinas. All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 20th episode of the Community Ignite series, Getting Started with WordPress on the Cloud. I am your host, Daria David, a Technical Community Manager of Educational PH. And wow, we are already at our 20th episode. Ayan, react naman, guys. Dyan, ilan dyan kayo. And you guys are happy to be here at our 20th episode. Give me a hard react or any of those react. All right, ayan. It's been such an amazing journey with you guys. And I hope nandito pa kayo for our 30th, 40th, 50th, and 100th episode. Oh, yan ha. Kita-kita tayo dyan. So, kumusta naman kayo? If you're a student, let me know what university you're from. Pag-professional naman, type your career in the chat box. All right, let me just check. This. Good evening, Sir Earl. Hello. Ayan. So, I hope everyone's having a good time dahil malapit na Christmas. And I just can't wait to meet with my relatives and have a one big gathering on the upcoming week. All right, let me know. Hi, everyone. Ako, mukhang nahihiya pa yung mga participants natin. Mag-hi naman kayo dyan. <laughs> Ayan, good evening, Sir Ellie, Ralph, Rosael. How about the others? Hello, Jeffrey. Oh, we have a full-stack web developer here. Nice to meet you po, Sir Kurt. Sige, last na, last. Ayan, good evening, Sir Francis. All right, so for our episode today, we're going to learn all about WordPress and how to deploy it to the cloud. So sa mga di nakakaalam ng WordPress, isa siyang platform kung saan pwede ka gumawa ng free website or blog. I remember uh, using WordPress for my uh, high school project noong computer class ko. And hanggang ngayon, as you can see, kahit sa college or developer ka na, it's really a, it's really a useful you know, platform. So before we continue, 
Ano nga ba ang Community Ignite series? So these are Thursday short episodes where we bring people, product, and purpose together. So you as a young IT professional or early in your career or you know just a young at heart or starting in the tech industry, you will definitely benefit from this series. Especially na this is co-presented by... Hmm, ano kayo? <laughs> this is co-presented by Amazon Web Services and AWS SIGClub. Pilipinas. Ayan. So, in the previous talk, uh, the topic was all about machine learning and arti- artificial intelligence on AWS. So, you can check all about it on our social media accounts. So, make sure to follow our Facebook, Instagram, t- TikTok, and LinkedIn to stay updated. Search nyo lang AWS Club Pilipinas or you can go to that link tree or you can scan the QR code flashed on your screen. Ayan. So our speaker for tonight is our very own technology officer of Education PH, uh, Bonga, and the only, only AWS community hero in the Philippines. So siya lang at siya ang pinakaunang AWS community hero in our country. He's also an AWS startup scout. May pa-premio ba? We'll see. We'll see in the last, ano. <laughs> Baka nandito ko lang, sir, hindi ko para sa premyo, ha? Ayan, so our speaker, once again, is also an AWS Startup Scout and the co-leader and organizer of AWS User Group Philippines. Alright, ready na ba kayo? Let's all give a warm welcome to Sir Rafael Pisambing. Hello, Sir Rafael. How are you tonight po? Hello, hello everyone. Good evening. And I'm glad to be here once more. And I'd like... Yes, to be back in the Philippines even. It's great to be home in that sense. All right. So if you have any questions for Sir Rafi habang talk niya, you, you can type it on the chat box. So just feel free to type it on the chat box. And if may time pa later, uh, Sir Rafi will answer them. All right? Yes. Definitely. And then sa, may nagtanong about may pa-premio ba? No? Uh, check na yung Facebook post ko. Uh, baka may makita kayo doon. Apa premio. So, uh, either sa Facebook ko, sa Young CTO, or uh, sa AWS User Group. Uh, may, may, may something there. Anyway, so mag-share na ako ng screen no? um, to talk about, of course, yung topic natin ngayon is WordPress. Just lang, ganyan lang ako ng counting time kasi... Para mag-start ako sa slides. Now, ang one of the things pala na why I like this talk is that uh, this is a language that I actually like. And I'm going to share now my screen, okay, which is getting started on WordPress plus cloud with AWS. All right, so again, a short background of myself. I have around 15 years of experience. Uh, focusing on software development. So I'm a developer by background. My stack of choice is uh, PHP, Linux, and uh, MySQL, right? So gustong gusto ko yung PHP, especially since I grew up in PHP. At that time, ang hirap makahanap ng free hosting. And uh, is, nag-develop din ako ng C Sharp, Java at that time. Pero for myself, for my my own projects, nahirapan ako maghanap ng free hosting na web. No? Um, may bayad kasing iba. So sa PHP na hanap ko, may libre. Um, so doon ako na-develop no? para makagawa ako ng mga free sites um, on, on my own. All right? And uh, generally mature, mature, I would say it's a mature technology, no? a mature language, I would say. So I'm your community hero. I've been certified for the cloud since 2013. And again, I'm a community leader. That means I help teach um, various technologies, especially with AWS. Yeah. And it was mentioned, I'm an AWS scout also. So for any startup out there, or yeah, if you have a startup, you need help on deploying on the cloud, you need you know, credits, you can also uh, apply through me to get your free hosting in that sense. Right, so our topic today is WordPress no, and cloud combined. So I'll just define a few, few information about WordPress first. I'll talk about cloud, what cloud brings. I talk, I'll talk about your options when using AWS with WordPress. 
and we'll also talk about an advanced diagram no what is the like a golden standard or what is like the most ideal design for high availability and high durability when we're using wordpress To start off, of course, WordPress is a CMS. It's a content management system, meaning it's the it's where a webmaster or an administrator will upload their content so that the new pages, uh, new posts are made for that website. Uh, it's based on PHP and MySQL. Okay. It is very featureful because there's a lot of plugin architecture so additional developers third party uh, companies have developed plugins and templates that wordpress can use with okay it is wordpress is mostly associated with blogging okay or simple websites maybe but actually it supports a lot of content including mailing lists forums even online stores, you know, some e-commerce actually run on WordPress. Even learning, LMS, some learning management system run on WordPress. To show you how much uh, WordPress dominates, no? uh, this is a 2021 infographic. Graphic, the web, 41% okay? of the web uses WordPress. Right. Uh, so if you think about it, right? If you if the world, right, all other technologies, all other uh, website making uh, templating system, okay, forty one percent. Okay, so almost almost half of it is made in the uh, on WordPress. One third of it, okay, shares the top ten thousand websites. So if you look at the traffic, all the sites. At the top 10,000, 36%, one third uses WordPress. And you can see there's a lot more numbers here. The top plugin, CMS distribution as well. Right? So you can see it's really widely adopted. And uh, so we already mentioned this one. The other one is that 64.9% of all CMS. I use WordPress. You know, we all we have other CMS such as Drupal, Joomla, okay, but among the CMS, uh, more than half uses WordPress. Okay, and again, because there's a lot of extensions, features that you can use, okay, there are over 50,000 plugins, 4,000 themes, okay, uh, and a lot more information that you could use, right, uh, to extend your WordPress. And in terms of for you as a developer, no, as a developer, if you want to pursue and specialize a WordPress uh, development career, on average, global average, okay, WordPress developers charge around fifty thousand, oh, sorry, fifty dollars or two thousand five hundred per hour. Okay, so if you work ten hours a day, okay, so ako time study that means twenty five. Thousand na yung uh, sahod mo for that day, no? uh, if, if 10 hours. Pero hindi ka naman overwork, 8 hours lang trinabaho mo. So, nabawasan ka ng 5,000. So, 9,500 lang. So, medyo lugi, 9,500 lang. Right? Um, and you, you won't be surprised na if you can get this because again, now that the world is now more open, more global, right? a lot of companies have already opened their borders um, you can actually find a work outside the country without leaving the country anymore. However, ito din yung caveat, no? because it's such a widely adopted CMS or widely adopted framework, okay, there is a study that WordPress is the most hacked CMS of all of them. Okay? Out of 8,000 infections, Okay, seventy four percent were built on WordPress. Okay, um, syempre, if hacker ka and gusto mong you know maka may target ka, syempre dun ka sa pinaka widely adopted, di ba? That's why then the hackers before ang ginagawa nilang 
uh, mga viruses mostly nasa Windows no kasi yun yung widely adopted Windows o syempre kung gagawa ka ng effort doon ka sa pinakamadami so unfortunately ganun din sa WordPress right so as developers we have to take this into account when we choose something popular that means we're also potentially um you have to keep up with security for this as well Next naman, next we talk about cloud computing. No? What is cloud computing? Cloud computing is nothing but the delivery on demand. Meaning, kung kailangan mo, kukunin mo. Hindi mo kailangan, hindi mo, hindi mo kukunin. Of IT resources and applications via the internet. Okay, so wala nang, ano, walang shipping, free shipping to. You don't have to wait for a package from, you know, from from our delivery because again you have access over it the internet so software software ang pinag-uusapan dito hindi hardware with pay as you go so as mentioned so parang rental hindi mo gagamitin hindi mo dapat babayaran okay. uh, sabi ko rin it's using everyone's computer community computer securely parang nakahiram ka ng computer shop no uh, pero syempre dapat secure Okay. And the term cloud computing was popularized in 2006. So 15 years na rin, ang tagal na. When Amazon.com released its EC2 product in 2006. So what are the different service types in the cloud? So first, we have infrastructure as a service. No? So normally, kunwari sa'yo, may computer ka, di ba? Ikaw bahala, kompleto yon Ikaw bibili ng computer mo, ikaw mag-assemble, ikaw maglalagay ng uh, power, korente, internet, na cooling. Uh, mga may iba pa dyan na uh, may mga magandang cooling. Okay? So yan yung tinatawag natin on-premise. Okay? Ikaw bahala sa lahat. Okay? Now, sa infrastructure as a service in the cloud, okay, the hardware component is now no, no longer yours. Okay? So software ka na lang. So, pipili ka pa rin ng operating system kung gusto mo Linux, gusto mo Mac, gusto mo Windows, o ikaw pa rin may bahala doon. And everything on top. Anong applications ilalagay mo, anong programming languages na i-install mo, everything, data na ilalagay mo, ikaw pa rin bahala. Next layer is platform as a service. Dito naman, wala ng operating system or at least hindi na masyado mo minamanage yung operating system. You just pick the operating system or at least the, the runtime. Usually, may pre-package runtime na. Pipiliin mo na. And then afterwards, mag-upload ka na lang ng uh, program mo. Okay? So, yung program and yung data, data mo na lang yung manage. And last one is software as a service. You are now the end user. So, parang yung Zoom, end user lang tayo. Uh, si Zoom na nagkikip ng application and data tayo ay tagagamit lang. Meron din tayong tinatawag na function as a service. Okay, um, later on naman to, these are small packages or small, I would say, services na you have to reassemble and orchestrate to make a bigger application. Okay, so bakit ko na-mention yun? No? Because in the cloud, right, in the cloud, you have a characteristics that is called virtually unlimited resource. Okay? Kasi hindi na tied yung hardware sa'yo, pwede ka na mag-order ng order ng order. No? Uh, that means you have, you can definitely get hundreds of servers, thousands of servers. Kung gusto mo ng sobrang laking storage, pwede na. No? So this means um, you have that virtually unlimited and that means also that you can perform tasks would have been impossible for your single computer. Yung hindi kaya ng laptop mo. No? Hindi kaya ng desktop mo. For this time, kaya na ng mga render farms. Yung mga sobrang daming computer na pinagtabi-tabi, pinagkoconnect-connect. You know? So instead na super computer, parang madaming super computer. No? Ganon yung effect. However, just to point out, grid computing or networking is not new. Okay, hindi to bago na madami kang computer ginagamit yung um, tatag nilang high 
uh, high performing na mga grid computing, mga uh, cluster computing, hindi yan bago, no? But dati, only available lang to sa mga bigger companies, right? Because they had to invest space. Okay? Kasi may hardware component pa eh. eh alam mo naman, gaano kamahal ang renta. Yeah, maka, kung baka kuha ka lang ng ganito kalaking size, ang mahal ng renta. So, you were physically limited. Okay? Um, but now, again, it's now available to us, directly as developers, no matter what stage you are, as a startup, as a student, uh, as a single developer, as a business. Okay. And so with that, introduction of a virtually unlimited infrastructure presents a scaling problem. So what is scaling problem? You have two options, or you can do a combination of these, which is scale up or down. So kung bus pa yan, yan, dinagdagan mo ng floor, ang bus, no? So isang bus pa rin, pero madami na siyang floor. Okay? Or horizontal scale, multiply. So instead na isang bus lang, dinamihan mo yung bus. Okay? So yan yung vertical and horizontal. So bakit siya importante malaman, especially sa WordPress na deployment natin? No? Okay. Pag nag-develop kasi tayo ng website, okay, website minsan iniisip natin, gano'n ka, tra gano ka daming traffic pa? Okay, gano'n ka daming traffic or gano'n ka demand yung magiging website natin or yung WordPress natin? So, syempre, gagawa tayo ng prediction. So, usually yung prediction natin, ito yung dot, dot, gray na dot, dot line, ito yun. Dapat, okay, dapat over time, okay, dapat over time, sumisikat yung site natin. Dumadami yung users, di ba? Uh, so, pataas ng pataas yung demand dapat. And alam natin, because pataas ng pataas yung demand, kailangan din natin na pataas ng pataas din yung cost ng infrastructure natin. Meaning, kailangan mo i-support yun. No? So, if you were doing this uh, traditionally or on your own, ito yung pinafala natin traditional line, yung hardware, blue. Okay? So, may server ka. Kunwari, may server ka, ganyan. Tapos, pag feeling mo, paubos na, or pakapos na, i-upgrade mo ng um, malakihan. No? Tapos, ayan, ulit na naman, upgrade ng malakihan. Kung physical pa to, kung, um, kung sa, sa inyo pa yan, yan, potentially, mahal to kasi nag upgrade ka nga lagi. Ito. If tingnan mo yung actual demand, itong pula, okay, ito yung actual, no? pag monitor actual, Makita mo na yung ceiling ng hardware mo and yung actual demand, anything below that, that's considered waste. Kasi hindi, hindi ginagamit at that time. Eh. Okay. Hindi ginagamit. And pinaka-worse dyan is yung demand. Okay. Kung yung, kunwari, pula, demand, isumobra sa hardware. Okay. Isumobra sa hardware. Ito, ano na to? Hindi na masaya yung user mo. You know? Ito yung mga nangyayari pag seat sale potentially hindi na kaya ng ng resource mo yung demand so kaya bumabagal yung internet bumabagal yung yung software ay uh, yung website no? or nagaka error it, it's because hindi nga kaya ng ng demand yung resources or yung resources yung demand so what we want to do is some sort of hugging the line or parang pina-follow natin yung demand Kung ito yung demand, gusto natin as much as possible yung resources natin very close to the demand. Okay? So para wala tayong waste and also wala tayong lost users. Okay? So yun yung gusto natin mangyari. And this is possible, again, through automation in the cloud. Okay? So questions that are asked no, when we are deploying apps like WordPress on the cloud, quality, how to best deploy in the cloud. Okay. Second is self-healing, self-manage, right? Meaning, yun nga, yung demand nag-hug sa, yung resources nag-hug sa demand. Okay. And lastly, cheaper. Of course, gusto natin uh, nagiging more economical tayo over time. Hindi pwedeng um, same lang kasi may, may tinatawag tayo economies of scale, right? Pag nag-book, buy ka, mas mura kaysa mag-sashay-sashay ka. 
right? So we have to make it cheaper over time also. So again, there's a lot of AWS options that you can use. Pero balik muna tayo again sa WordPress. Okay? So sa WordPress, when you're getting started, okay, when you're getting started, first option that you might want to consider is called Amazon Light Sale. So this is a private server with just a few clicks. Okay? If, if nandito kayo ng opening, okay, may video kanina na may summary about Light Sale konti, no? shinare niya yung steps, pero ulitin ko lang din. So, pag pumunta ka ng uh, AWS Light Sale, merong simple graphical interface. Okay, very simple, hindi masyadong kalat, hindi masyado parang overwhelming compared ng traditional AWS console. No? So yan, may greeting lang sa'yo. Good afternoon. And uh, at the moment, no instances. Okay? So you obviously just click create instance. Okay? Then pipili ka ng location. Right? So picking the location, as much as possible, pick the closest, okay, closest to your customers or to your users, right? So, um, maganda Singapore for us, kasi ito yung pinakamalapit sa akin. Next, pili ka Linux. Magusto mo, gusto mo ba Microsoft? Okay, um, sa mga katulad ko, na uh, medyo cost effective or cost um, efficient, right? So pipili ako ng Linux. Right. And then, may pwede kang pumili ng other apps. So, dito sa screenshot ko, dalawa lang yung pinakita ko. So, meron akong WordPress and WordPress multi-site na option. Kung gusto mo, empty na lamp, pwede rin. Okay, uh, node. And then, again, may, may other options pa sa baba. No? So, madami yan. Pero for our talk, ang pinili ko dito is WordPress multi-site. Okay, once pinili mo na yan, pipili ka naman ng size. Okay, so or which is tied to magkano mo gusto or magkano yung budget mo. And again, kagandahan ngayon, okay, kagandahan ngayon, not just for WordPress or PHP, MySQL, is with AWS free tier, okay, with every AWS free tier, you can actually host your site even for one year for free. So ditong light sale na to, uh, three months lang yung free, no? So again, dito makakalit uh, hanap ka ng, kunwari, gusto mo ito, $10 per month. Okay, meron ka ng 2 gigs, meron kang 60 gigabyte na SSD, and then meron kang 3 terabytes na transfer. Okay, so again here, you can pick your uh, price. Dito sa upper right, upper left pala, gusto ko lang ipakita dito, meron siyang automatic snapshots. So back up, no? something na hindi natin masyado naalala. Okay, kasi especially kung manual to is gumawa ng backup. Minsan kakakapagod kasi minsan uh, mag-isip na mag-backup na. Mag-backup ako every day, every end of the weekend. Eh, Magpa-party pa ako end of the weekend. Di ba? Or may outing. Nakalimutan ko mag-backup. So, maganda na rin may automatic snapshots, right? So, so upper left. Of course, you just give it a name, any name. Um, wag nyo gayahin to kasi hindi masyadong um, maganda din siguro. For example, maybe the stack tapos yung project name and ano maganda yun din siguro or yung domain ganyan mayan yung mga magandang name okay so again you'll have after you click create that instance yan yeah, pili mo na click next instead na kanina good morning and then create instance meron ng lalabas na pending okay pending na nagbo-boot up na yung instance mo okay and then after a while magiging running na siya Okay, so from there, meron ka ng running WordPress site. No? So anong itsura niya? Is ganyan. No? Very simple, uh, default WordPress. Uh, if, uh, yung screenshot na to, kaninang morning to, December 16, 2021, para lang makita nyo na ginawa ko to this morning. No? Okay, and, and inside the console, so kung familiar kayo, baka sanay na kayo dun sa Let's say cPanel or other other hosting. Ito very simple lang din, no? Again, once uh, pinili mo yung server mo, yung light sail, puntahan mo yung isa. Okay, makukuha mo yung public IP, makukuha mo yung private IP. And for the future, ito IPv6, no? The future is IPv6 daw. So meron ka ring IPv6 support. Okay? Um di ko sure kung ano kadaming may IPv6 support na other 
other hosting, no? Uh, pero here in AWS, meron. So there, you can see a lot of tabs. Okay? If you are, since Linux, yung sinabi ko, you can SSH to it. No? Uh, without installing PuTTY or a terminal or other SSH, pwede ka na mag-SSH directly from the browser. So pwede yun. Okay, next, sa storage, just in case gusto mo mag-add ng, ng other disk, kunwari, ako uh, Windows pa yun, or gusto mo mag-add ng Drive D, Drive E, okay? so pwede kang mag-add ng more uh, disk. Okay? Next, may built-in metrics. Okay? May built-in metrics na ang server mo. Okay? Um, so here you can see may CPU net metrics, network, status check. Okay? Tingnan niyo itong status check, important to. And ang gusto ko dito is may alarm. Okay, may alarm. So, for example, nag-set ka ng status check. If may failure, gusto mong mag-email or mag-text sa'yo, o, di ba? Parang, hey, down yung website mo. Ayan. Pwede mo iset yun. Right? Para ma-notify ka na may error. May status check error sa server mo. Okay. Next, sa networking, okay, kailangan mo ng static IP address para hindi papalit-palit yung IP address ng website mo. Yan, pwede ka mag-create ng static IP address. Okay. Next, gusto mong magkaroon ng firewall to make sure na you know, only tama lang yung binibigay. So, for example, SSH na dapat ikaw lang. Okay. So, yan. Pwede mo ilock yan. SSH. Gusto mo mag-FTP? Yan, pwede mo i-allow FTP. But again, restricted. Maybe only to your own uh, house or own network. Pwede. And uh, let's say, ayaw mo ng HTTP. Yan, pwede mo tanggalin yung HTTP at iwan lang yung HTTPS. Okay. Pero dito sa right, yan, yan. Pinaspin ko lang. At ang sample dito is using a single okay, server. But, you could technically use multiple servers and have load balancing and distribution as well. So LightSail does support load balancing and CDNs as well. Okay. Balik tayo sa backups. No? So yung buong site, again, pwede magka-backup manually or automated. Okay. Highlight ko lang tong automated uh, backup as important ito. Especially as developers, sometimes yung clients natin, no, uh, na-experience ko na to, um, Kunwari na yung admin nila na, na, na hack. No? So gusto nila i-restore back to a few days ago or a few months ago. Okay, so that's why maganda dito yung uh, automatic snapshots. Okay? okay, may tags yan. Parang tagging lang. You know, kung gusto mo anong klaseng gusto mo itag. Next is history. Important. Gusto mo makita kailan na-create, na, kailan na-restart, kailan dinilit. Uh, may history din. And say no. Delete. Lastly, of course, pwede may delete. Of course, may prompt naman. So, pag clinic may yes, delete, edi mawawala na. Okay. So, again, just to recap, it is light sale. Very easy to deploy. Okay. So, para lang siyang cPanel or other other uh, wizard steps na click, click, click ka lang, madedeploy na agad. Okay. May built-in browser SSH siya sa mga medyo advanced, mag kalikot ng Linux setup na. Very easy to manage, such as your backups, firewalls, alerts. And potentially, meron kang fixed pricing. You know? At least kita mo na agad kung gano'y babayaran mo per month para patungan mo na lang siguro ng times to mo, tapos charge mo sa client. No? Mo, okay, uh, pinili kong server sa'yo is $5, pero hindi ko sasabihin yun, $10 is charge ko sa client. No? Parang gano'n. Pwede ganun. Right. Next, deployment option for you is uh, a marketplace. So, so marketplace, um, think of this like an area where you can buy off-the-shelf software. Okay. So in the marketplace, you just look for a solution. So here, I, I type WordPress. No? Pwedeng, pwedeng other solutions. Let's say you are working no or may yung teacher mo tapos sabi ng manager mo parang gusto ko mag gusto kong mag POC tayo or proof of concept ng bagong bagong um, system 
And siguro sabihin natin, let's say hindi to WordPress no. Kunwari, na try na, na try niyo na ba yung Joomla? Yan or uh, ano pa bang magandang example? Sa mga bigger company siguro na try niyo na ba yung SAP? Eh, yeah, yun SAP, malaking ano yun no? Malaking software, right? So ikaw, as a developer, alam mo namang POC to, gusto mo lang pag-aralan, okay? ang hirap naman if aaralan mo pa paano mag-install, paano lahat yun. No? Gusto mo nga ma-use agad yung software. So what you want, what you can do is hanapan na lang sa marketplace, okay? and then gamitin mo siya. Okay? And then of course, pwede mo naman i-dispose afterwards. So in this case, again, we have WordPress. Okay, let's say, hindi ka gusto mo developer, ayaw mo magdumaan sa light sale. Kunwari, ayaw mo lang doon para lang may option ka. So, search ako right, uh, WordPress. For example, ito. Yan, no? Gusto ko WordPress with Nginx. Hindi, uh, hindi Apache yung gagamitin ko. Or let's say WordPress, pero gusto ko may itong light speed cache. Right? So, may mga additional things na pwede nang at pre-installed na. So, Yan, ito meron tayong 368 results sa WordPress pa lang. So again, piliin mo lang yung software package na, na, na gusto mo. Yan. Afterwards, makikita mo yung uh, yung overview, yung pricing. Okay, so ito, yung developer nito, sabi nila walang bayad yung software, additional software. Okay? Ang binabayaran mo lang talaga is yung instance. Ayan. Tingnan mo yung uh, region na uh, de-deploy mo at magkano yung magiging per hour mo. Depende sa size ng instance mo. Okay? And you'll notice here, again, free tier okay, for bagong AWS accounts up to 750 hours a month, meaning the entire month libre. Okay? So this is one way you can actually have a WordPress site for free for one year. Sabi, one year for free, no? Right, so there's a lot of documentations, Jen, on how to use and in support that you can receive. Look at the reviews, okay? Parang um, nag shopping lang tayo, no? Tingnan natin yung customer review, okay? Happy ba sila sa paggamit ng software na yun or at least pag-install ng software na yun, okay? Once you're happy, you accept the terms, okay? In this case, WordPress Engine X SSL, yeah, accept the terms, okay? And then, pwede mo na i-launch. So dito, okay, uh, sure na ako. Pabili ako ng uh, AMI na yung WordPress nga, yung software version. Sa Singapore ako ila-launch. Okay, review ko yung price. Magkano yung monthly estimate ko sa T3A. Ito yung price niya, $17 per month. Okay. Um, next, pipili ako ng instant size. So kanina may estimate dito kung using T3A. Okay, uh, ito T3 dot micro yung pinili ko. So pinalitan ko yung instant size. Tang VPC, again, you can just use the default if um, hindi ka masyadong particular muna or especially if you're getting started only, you can just pick the defaults. No? Iniwan ko lang to default, iniwan ko lang default. And then here, security group. So ito yung parang firewall. No? Uh, again, you can just create a new one based on the seller recommended setting. So you can pick, follow the seller. So yung seller, ah, yung software template, meron na rin siyang firewall na by default na ibibigay sa'yo. Okay. Then afterwards, you launch the software. Ayan, may congratulations na ako. Instant software is successfully deployed on an EC2. Okay. So from there, Ito yung itsura ng console. So as you can see, compared dun sa light sale, medyo mas padami na siyang um, details. No? Sobrang daming details. This is really more for those that are in uh, at work level. No? You maybe are doing your company website, company blog, or your company e-commerce on WordPress. So you'll see something like this more. Okay, and again, inside, you'll have your details, security, network, storage, status checks, monitoring, and tags. Meron din ganyan. And additional information and data as well. Okay, and again, once uh, that's done, parang lang pakita ko dito, okay, duman ako sa WordPress, natalon ako sa EC2, then meron na akong blog. Again, launch on WordPress. 
Okay, and yung admin niya. Okay. Right. So again, what's good is, of course, merong mga monitoring. That means pwede ka rin mag-add ng alarms. Okay, so that it will help you maintain your WordPress higher. So, siguro one of the things at this point, um, ito nga, to summarize in AMI Marketplace, again, very easy to deploy okay, because the pre-installation is done for you. There's a lot of packages available to you and actually deployed on a virtual machine, meaning um, deploy siya sa isang computer na may hawak ka. Okay? One of the advantages of using LightSail and also the um, from a marketplace is usually they will okay, maintain a version. Okay? So, for example, may bagong update ng WordPress. Okay? Bagong update ng WordPress. Kanya na, Dave, that means most likely may bagong package available so you can keep up. So, the, the providers okay, the providers will normally keep the, the package up to date so that you as a developer, right, uh, hindi maiwan yung package mo as, as obsolete. Okay, so in a notify ka na hey may bagong package, uh, update mo naman. Right? So you, that's this one thing na dapat ina update lagi. Of course, if you wanna do it yourself, okay, gusto mo mag practice or siguro sanay ka na. Kasi dine deploy mo yung WordPress locally, so sanay ka mag deploy locally or on your own. You can always do that because you have the Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud. So it's just another computer, a virtual machine. Okay, so your choice is again, pili ka lang ng operating system. Okay, pili ka ng size ng server mo. Piliin mo ilan yung i-deploy mo, anong VPC, and etc. Madami, pwede, pwede mo namang iwan as default still. Okay, yung size ng disk mo. Okay, uh, pwede rin yung volume types. Gusto mo ba IOPS? or input output per second na SSD or gusto mo magnetic. Diba? Pwede rin yung old-fashioned magnetic. Palitan mo yung size ng gigabytes mo. Okay. Review mo. And then launch. And then uh, i-ask ka ng key pair. Ito yung security naman. Okay. So instead ng username, usually bibigyan ka ng key pair to launch. And from there, ayan, may launching na. Ayun. Um, pag na-launch na, may EC2 ka na. So again, very similar lang siya dun sa marketplace. Except this one, bear. Usually bear yung kinukuha mo sa EC2. Or manually mo din deploy sa EC2. So it's a bear or OS na pinili mo. You basically, you have to self-manage, you have to self-install, and everything in the OS and up is your responsibility. If naalala niyo yung infrastructure as a service, ito yun. Diba? Infra mas infrastructure as a service siya. Yung light sale, parang platform as a service light. No? Then yung um, yung uh, marketplace, parang medyo in between. Kasi may packages naman na hinanda for, for you. And, uh, may message ka naman, pero still nakalunch sa EC2. So it's still your responsibility. Pero at least may, may konting support on the package itself. Okay, next option for you is Beanstalk. Okay, Beanstalk. So, ito is easy to begin, impossible to outgrow. Okay. So, may actually, my full, okay, my full um, tutorial on how to launch um, WordPress on Beanstalk. Okay. So, ito naman, moving tayo towards a better deployment. Kasi, in, kanina, ang pinakita natin, isang server lang. Isang server lang, hindi siya nag auto scale meaning para lang siyang traditional. Pero dito, we're moving towards uh, golden standard. No? Parang depende sa traffic, lumalaki at lumiliit yung resources natin. Okay, so again, meron siyang, uh, dito makikita mo, sorry, ito, 5 steps, 60 minutes. Within 60 minutes, meron ka ng more or less golden standard ng um, <clears throat> ng WordPress. Okay, so ito, madami siyang steps. Um, madami lang siyang, sorry, madami lang siyang documentation, pero konti lang yung steps. Okay, 
in the end, you'll get something like this. Okay, you'll get something like this where your users, meron kang load balancer, meron kang mga servers na naka-auto scale. Okay, so siya na yung magdadagdag and magbabawas ng servers for you and then meron kang um, highly available database. So meron kang master and secondary para if wala yung master, yung secondary yung mabubuhay. Right? And then this is powered using um, yung database mo. Siyempre, since nakahiwalay. You can see na two-tier architecture to nakahiwalay. And then may, sorry, merong ang um, primary or master and then yung secondary. Okay. So that's called RDS. Madaming engines yung supported. Here we have MariaDB, Aurora, Oracle, SQL Server, Postgres, MySQL. And again, ang kagandahan ng RDS is, again, yung automated backups and other features niya. So, feature-rich din siya. Okay. So, again, to launch your Elastic Beanstalk, okay, ang process niya is, gagawa ka ng application, let's your WordPress, or download mo yung WordPress, upload mo lang yung WordPress na yon, magde-deploy siya ng environment for you, and then, yun na, running na. No? So, here, so, yan. Gumawa ako ng WordPress tutorial application name. Pipili ka lang ng platform. Of course, alam natin yung WordPress will run on PHP. So, pinili ko PHP, PHP 8. Okay, and then uh, platform version, yung PHP na stack, na platform 3.318 yung pinili ko, yung recommended. Okay, so again, from there, uh, follow mo lang yung steps. 60 minutes, meron ka ng super gandang WordPress stack. It provides the heavy lifting of infrastructure. Meron na siyang uh, high capacity, load balancing, scaling. For you, you just really upload your application and its platform as a service like. Okay. So again, that's uh, auto scales, database backups, versioning, environment variables are available for you. So very production uh, heavy na siya. Next, if mahilig kayo mag-containerization or narinig nyo na yung containers, you can also do Docker with WordPress. Okay, so meron tayong, uh, punta ka lang sa docker, uh, hub.docker.com, kunin nyo yung WordPress doon. Okay, so Amazon or AWS supports Docker. And there are many ways you can do this, you know, even through Beanstalk, pwede. Okay, so Beanstalk supports Docker. That means kung kunuha mo yung WordPress Docker, then pwede mo din ilan sa Beanstalk yun. Okay, actually, sobrang daming options for you sa AWS, ECS, Fargate, AS, ECR, Batch, uh, Docker Enterprise Edition, madami. You know? so again, you just get a Docker from Docker Hub. And then you can then deploy that in AWS. You're following Docker principles, but you're still using AWS Cloud. So ito yung sample dito. May WordPress, Docker, ECS, okay? and then may code pipeline din to manage changes dun sa Docker image. Okay? And then it's using RDS and EFS as well for file system. Okay. Lastly, okay, again, last, na gusto lang share is called CloudFormation. Ito naman yung umuuso ngayon, or actually uso na talaga siya, which is infrastructure as a service. No? infrastructure as a service. Um, so yung code mo, uh, sorry, infrastructure as code. So yung code mo, definitely, uh, yung design ng architecture mo, pwede mo na version kasi kinocode mo na. Okay? So here, may mga samples mga tayo dito. So kung WordPress ka, kung gusto mo ng simple lang, okay, may sample na dyan, uh, uh, container, uh, <coughs> cloud formation, Kung gusto mo scalable and durable, okay, naka EC2 instance with auto scaling, okay, pero na yan, okay, and then lastly, kung gusto mo ng chef with WordPress, pero din. Okay, ganito yung itsura niya, more or less. Okay, mas, to nga, mas golden standard pa to. Kung kanina is parang papotang gold standard ito, sobrang ganda na ng design. Okay, madami siyang components. Okay, so again, merong easy to 
launch, pag clinic mo lang yung launch stack, okay, makukuha mo yung uh, template, which pwede mo basahin by the way, because again, code na siya. So, naka-JSON format siya. Okay, and then from there, okay, yung template, sinisave yan sa S3, then rinarun sa CloudFormation, and then mag -de deploy na siya ng server, ng WordPress mo. Again, bakit siya golden standard? Pag tinan mo yung components, okay, components pa lang ng WordPress mo, okay, may Route 53 siya for your DNS, and then meron na siyang caching and distribution agad. So dito pa lang sa number one, meron ka ng DDoS protection. Diba? Um, yung isang isang media site kahapon nata, nag-post sila na DDoS sila. Uh, Naka-ano naman sila, naka-recover agad. Okay, so may may DDoS protection din sila. So dito pa lang sa WordPress natin may DDoS protection na tayo dito sa CloudFront. Okay? Once nakapasok na, okay, sa ating infrastructure, okay, may load balancer tayo. Okay, may load balancer tayo. And you notice dito na naka-private yung subnets natin. Uh, para sa mga bago pa lang, that means hindi exposed directly. So may additional layer of security. Okay? Uh, because hindi natin ina-expose yung instance natin to the public. Okay? Kailangan dumaan ng load balancer okay? and even may mga NAT gateways pa. Anyway, from this layer here, from the load balancer, dito na yung WordPress instance natin na nag-auto-scale. Okay? So again, nag-auto-scale to kung, kung sobrang daming uh, traffic, baka umabot to ng 50 servers. No? Kung wala masyadong traffic, 10. Okay, so mag-set ka lang ng minimum and maximum. Right. And then meron din caching. Okay, may another layer of caching pa. Meaning any kind of request to the database, okay? Request to the database. Kung repeated yung request na yon, such as maybe select country list, di ba? Or mga ganyan. Yan kinakash mo na sa sa memcache. So may caching ka na. Okay? Then meron ka pang read replica dito. Okay, ito read replica, meaning nakahiwalay pa yung insert and update mo sa read. Okay, so pwede ka mag-add ng additional read replicas din, multiple read replicas, so that very useful and read replicas especially for reporting kasi hindi na-affect yung mga insert, update, delete mo kasi doon ka sa read replica nagbabasa. Then meron kang EFS for shared file systems. So example, yung mga users mo ay nag upload ng images, Yung admin mo, nag-upload ng images, eh dito sinestore sa EFS. Hindi dito, sa instance, because minsan na, nawawala-wala nga ito, di ba? Minsan dinidelete nila. So anything na persistent dito sa EFS, nila sinestore na uh, files. Okay? So dito, again, you can see na how this can be a golden standard already for your WordPress. Okay? And additionally, you can add more services pa to even expand this diagram. So again, to summarize, siguro, wow, overwhelming, no? There is no one way to deploy WordPress to the cloud. Ultimately, um, my advice to you is ask yourself and your team, what are the goals? If your goal is to make a personal website, huwag ka na dumaan sa cloud formation siguro. Personal site yun eh. So hindi ka naman mag-expect ng traffic. Naganon. So light sale ka na lang. Pero let's say you are doing a e-commerce site or um, new LMS and makikikompete ka kay Lazada and Shopee. Uh, Nako, pun punta ka na dun sa golden standard. A cloud formation ka na. Uh, and again, in somewhere in between, depending again on your goals, what you are ready for. Okay, so kung baguhan ka pa lang, try out the easier steps. Maybe over time, you learn and then punta ka dun sa more advanced. Okay? Um, so, yun yung questions mo. Where can you... Goals? What are you ready for? What do you need immediately? And what can you defer? Right? Where can you get started as well? Right? So, from there, thank you so much. Um, meron din pala ako. Plug ko lang. May YouTube ako. So, puntahan niyo yung youtube.com, yung CTO. And uh, personally, may feedback form din ako if how I delivered. I decided to use Taglish uh, for our session. Uh, but let's say, you know, sabihin niya sa akin, I actually, sir, mas maganda sana kung nag-straight English ka. Right? Or maybe sabihin niyo, 
sana nagbisaya ka na lang ano may may pa nagbisaya ka mas mas masabot ko you can also tell me that in the feedback as well so again this is a personal one for me later on you'll also get a set of uh, QR for for the entire sick club right so um let me check the questions no while i was delivering dito yes php php everywhere sabi ni earl sa sa balo yes php it's quite mature I, i i still think it will it will stay rails uh, may question dito from jess h so siguro ang question dito is nagso support ba si light sail ng rails yes nagso support si light sail ng rails no? ruby on rails by the way Next, can we get a copy of the slides? Hindi mo kailangan ng copy of slides, Rets, because may recording tayo. Okay, may video recording tayo. Again, punta lang kayo sa youtube.com or sa Linktree para makuha yung recording ng ating session. Okay. Next, what would you recommend for e-commerce site with LMS? E-commerce site na may LMS. Uh, I'm assuming na binebenta mo ay yung hindi naman physical goods no kasi LMS to so for example something like a course tutorial so I think look at uh, maybe like things like LearnPress could be an LMS that you could start off with bigyan lang ko lang ng trivia konti no trivia konti if kilala niyo yung popular na LMS called Tutorials Dojo They are running on WordPress. Okay, Tutorials Dojo is running on WordPress. Yung buying na course nila, that is uh, LMS with e-commerce on WordPress. Okay, so Tutorials Dojo is a good example for that. Paano mag-set ng domain name, sir? Yes, so kung sa light sale tayo, meron doon actually sa networking part where you can buy the domain. Okay, kung gusto mo mag-buy ng domain, you can also do that there. If let's say na bili mo na yung domain elsewhere, um, pwede mo i-point using the static IP dun sa ating servers. Okay, so depending anong pinili natin, madarami tayong ways to modify the domain name. Pero again, kung bago ka pa lang, you can already buy the domain inside LightSail itself. Next question dito. Meron tayong question from Rets. Free po ba ang hosting sa AWS? So as uh, meron tayong tinatawag na free tier, Okay, free tier. So technically, you could deploy uh, hosting in uh, for free in AWS. So may mga ano tayo dyan. Uh, by the way, punta kayo sa... At then, kanya mga user groups. May mga tips yan on how you could perpetually, perpetually have a free hosting with AWS. No? Um, yes, kay Brian, sabi nga, Route 53. That's a, a domain name service also that you can buy. Next dito, meron tayong question. Is it really necessary to have a TCC and A level of knowledge first before learning AWS? Okay, so ang um, yung CC and A that's a networking, no? So in AWS kasi, madami kang career paths, no? Madami kang career path pwede. Meron kang solutions architect, meron kang developer, meron kang sysops, may devops, okay, or industry Meron machine learning, may mga network in, uh, cloud network engineers. Okay? So, madami yan. So, depende sa, sa kung saan mo gusto pumunta eventually. CCNA will help you, especially if, let's say, network engineering yung path mo. Okay? Especially sa network engineering yung path mo, uh, makakatulong yung CCNA. Alright, so I think yan yung last question. So I'll go I'll return it back to our host. Uh, may five minutes pa ata tayo. And thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much for that wonderful talk, Sir Rafi. And by the way, guys, once again, Sir Rafi is a content creator and a YouTuber too. So you can check out his YouTube channel, Young CTO. Ayan. So I have learned a lot from this one art tech driven webinar. And syempre, may mga tanong pa kayo, you may reach out Sir Rafi dun sa YouTube channel niya and other social media platforms sa LinkedIn, sa Facebook, and others. So thank you so much, Sir Rafael. So we hope that you learned a lot in this episode. Pero syempre, hindi matatapos yung ating uh, weekly Community Ignite na 
gathering without, of course, a photo op. So, please open your cameras. Teka, nakapag... Ayan. Ayan, naka-allow na po yung pag-open ng camera. Open na po tayo ng camera for a photo op. Ayan. Nako, feeling ko yung iba happy-happy na kasi malapit na ang Christmas break. Ayan, photo op po tayo. Ayan, I'm gonna wait for others to open their camera. Hello po! Mr. Jean, Sir Tristan, Sir Francis, Sir Joshua, Sir Nico. Sir Nico, kulay orange lang po yung uh, iyong cam. So, baka ano po talaga. Hello po. Ayan, intay lang po tayo. And yung mga one minute pa po. Sir Nico, may time pa kayo. Ayos yung camera nyo. Sayang naman. <laughs> Ayan, so. Ayan, may humahabol pa. Ayan, naayos na po yung camera ni Sir Nico. Hello po. Ayan, alright, mukhang, ayan, sige. Mga one minute, one minute. Ayan, nakapag, ayan. And that's, uh, may nagtanong dito, um, Andrea, Miss Andrea, no? Um, there is a certificate of attendance against me. Yes. Uh, after po ng photo op, malapit na po yan. Ayan, alright, picture na po tayo. Smile po tayo. Wait lang, gusto ko sa, ano yung glasses ko. Alright, one, two, three. Isa pa po. One, two, three. All right. So before, thank you po sa mga nag-open cam. Ayan. So before I tell you guys, uh, I tell you guys all about the feedback form. Gusto ko muna kayo impitahin. I am inviting you to the AWS Community ICN 2021 this Saturday. So it is a community-led conference that delivers peer-to-peer -peer learning and networking, providing developers with an opportunity to acquire AWS knowledge from one another. So yung speaker po natin today na magsispeak din po siya sa AWS Community Day. So abangan niyo po siya doon. So this event is open to all developers and builders, AWS heroes, community builders, user group and meetup group members, and anyone interested in learning more about the AWS community. So I will, ayan, nakapaste na po ang registration link sa chat and we hope to see you all there. Again, wag mo yung kalimutan this Saturday, AWS Community Day. So, dito po nagtatapos ang ating Community Ignite Series Episode 20, Getting Started with the WordPress on the Cloud. So, to answer our feedback form, please go to go.education.ph slash CIS20 feedback. Again, that's go.education.ph slash CIS20 feedback. So, you may scan the QR code para directo na po ang pagsagot nyo ng feedback form. All right. So thank you guys so pag bye bye sa amin and I'm excited I am so excited to see you all next week so make sure to follow our Facebook, Instagram and Twitter to stay updated search lang AWS si Club Pilipinas and of course don't forget to join the Sit Club community we have a lot in store for you. Ayan, sabi nga ni Miss Rose na ang next week ay ang ating year end episode. I can't wait to guys. I can't wait to see you guys all. Day. Ayan. So lastly, we would like to remind everyone that the e-certificates will only be given if you answered our feedback form to be shown. And dapat nakapag-provide po kayo ng correct na email address and correct na name. Ayan. So once again, I would like to thank our co-presenters. And sino nga ba ang ating co-presenters? Thank you so much to our co-presenters, AWS and AWS Sick Lab Filipinas. And once again, thank you everyone. Stay safe, and I'll see you next week. Happy holidays! See you next week, guys. Ayo next week may pa ina ba streets na yon. Sir Nico do ka pumunta, di ba si Sir Nico yung kasi. I'll see you next week, guys. Happy holidays. Goodbye, everyone. One of the things I'm most proud of of working at Solemn and partnering with AWS is the focus on people. They give us the ability to work with them and partner with them with workshops and bringing everybody together, but also allowing our people to have an ownership mindset over the learnings that they want to take on to help grow their careers and to be able to meet the needs of their clients. Four years ago, we started with only 32 AWS certifications, and now we have over 1,200 certifications. It's about meeting the needs and also being there with everybody that you're trying to serve, from your employees and your customers, your clients, and your communities. One of my favorite parts of working with AWS and working with our partner training teams is the opportunity to also push back, like we need more, so that we can build these community of learners together.